What's up guys? Aladdin is here to take you through a carnivore bodybuilding day of eating. And today's going to be fairly simple. You know, mostly beef, maybe some fish here and there. I haven't been doing raw dairy, haven't been experimenting with any fermented foods, although I have been doing, you know, some messing around with various supplements as well as honey as a source of carbohydrates for bodybuilding. So you guys might learn a few tips and tricks. Let's get started. As you guys know, I like starting the day with raw food because it's easy to prepare, it's quick, it's not stressful on digestion. So this is some top round, and this is actually from the local beef package on Frankie's Free Range Meat. I usually like doing ribeye, New York strip, or tenderloin, chopping it up into steak tartare because it's easier to cut. But top round is also, you know, something that's great for steak tartare. And here I have some Cantabrian anchovies. Uh, these are Spanish anchovies that are fermented for about six to seven months. So I, I think these are completely raw. I've been trying to do some experimenting, but the problem is any sort of heavily salted food has a different probiotic content than an unsalted naturally fermented food. That being said, they are absolutely delicious in some steak tartare. So let's uh, chop this top round up like a vegan. First, I guess we have to take our shirt off. If I'm not mistaken, the male equivalent of a vegan girl being half naked is shirtless. So whenever I'm making tartare, I'll cut a few strips like that. I'll put them on top of each other and I'll cut across vertically and then horizontally. And you can go through this with the knife again if you want it to be finer. So for the average person, I would say between half a pound to three quarters of a pound of raw meat would be enough. Uh, if you're bodybuilding, if you have a higher lean body mass, maybe you want to do a pound. Oh my God, guys, this looks so good. Uh, so now that we have our, our bowl of meat, let's take a couple of these Spanish anchovies. And these are packed in olive oil. And although the percentage of olive oil isn't that high, I still don't really want to eat any of it. So I'll take, you know, a couple of these anchovies, five or six. I really like anchovies, so I'm doing a lot. And these you do want to chop up pretty fine. I would be inclined to say you can even blend them up, but I don't want you to ruin your blender. You know, it'd be funny if I was this like evil villain and I went into vegans' houses and blended up fish in their blenders and they would never use them again. <laughs> okay, so we got our anchovies in this bowl. Now here I have Colatura di Alici. Uh, used to be called garum in Roman times. It's similar to fish sauce. It's basically, you know, rotten anchovy juice. I wanna put a bit of this in this to season it. It's very salty, fermented, funky, just like the anchovies. It's not as potent as fish sauce, but that should be enough. Maybe like a teaspoon. I'm just gonna mix this up. You know, this is great if you're like allergic to eggs, if you don't like eggs. Oh, you know what would be really good in here? You take a squeeze of lemon juice. It would really cut through, cut through the fishiness, add some brightness, acidity. Lemon juice would be amazing in this. If you guys are trying to find this stuff, the anchovies are from Arayabe, and these are pretty expensive. This, you know, one pound tin was, I think, 30 or $40 and Colatura di Alici. This isn't that expensive, but I don't really know where you'd get it. I got this stuff from a restaurant supplier. I'll see if we can get it on Frankie's Free Range Meat because these are two really cool, high quality, tasty animal products. You know, you can get Red Boat fish sauce in the supermarket. You could get your regular can of anchovies, but you know, this is taking it a step further. <laughs> Imagine like you have kids and instead of giving them cereal, you put them on the carnivore diet and they get a bowl of meat and anchovies. <laughs> put some milk in there, that'd be great. Okay, I put way too many anchovies in here. But the reason I put that many was partially for, you know, the fermented food, the nutrients. I did a steak tartare recipe a couple months back, maybe even like a year at this point. You know, you put some capers in here, lemon juice, egg yolks, black pepper. This will be really, really, really delicious and tasty. 
I still kind of like it. It's like, it's almost good. It's not like amazing. I think the problem might be that I let those anchovies sit out for a couple days and the anchovies were much fresher when I first opened the can. So as you guys know, I fixed my histamine intolerance, but back uh, last year on my birthday, I love anchovies so much. I ate like the whole can of that and I did not sleep for like three days straight. If you're not getting enough copper, your body can't produce the enzymes to metabolize histamine. And a carnivore diet tends to be deficient in copper. Yeah, this could definitely use an egg yolk. And if you want all that other stuff too. Egg yolk though, definitely helpful. Yeah, those anchovies did not taste like this three days ago. I'm not really full and this doesn't taste super amazing. So I'm gonna save this for maybe tomorrow actually. So right now I'm not really consuming that much fat because with the iron overload issues, my liver was releasing, you know, bile that was filled with iron. So if I just stick to leaner protein and honey, I don't get that issue as I continue to donate blood and remove the iron. So, you know, removing the fat from the diet has, you know, lost a lot of variety and, uh, you know, enjoyment to be honest, but should only be a few more months. So currently with the honey, I'm spreading it out in intervals throughout the day so that I, you know, digest it efficiently and I'm not overloading my body, you know, with all the sugar at once. After the meal, I'll have around like 30 grams worth of sugar. So that's about two tablespoons of honey. I mean, you know, sometimes I, I want more and I have like three or four tablespoons. Uh, then it depends on when I go to the gym. Uh, either way, uh, about an hour before I go to the gym, I have another 30 grams of sugar. And then when I'm at the gym, when I pull into the parking lot, I'll have maybe another tablespoon. Sometimes I've even like, I'll mix some honey in some water and like I'll drink some honey water throughout the workout. I haven't noticed a performance increase over when I was eating fat. The problem is now I'm not eating fat, so I need to get my calories from somewhere. I will say that I noticed a performance increase from consuming milk before I worked out. So I think a combination of readily available B vitamins, amino acids, and some carbohydrates is the best. Uh, I think kefir would be a really interesting pre-workout drink. Uh, so maybe when I start doing the raw dairy again, um, I mean, maybe even just like a fermented drink in general, but I'm gonna have two tablespoons of this now. Uh, I'll bring it with me to the gym, have another tablespoon in the car, and then when I get home and have, you know, the second meal of the day, that's when I'll have a little more honey. So I'm in my room and I'm testing the levels and I found out that my neighbor has some type of <laughs> I found out that my neighbor has some type of wife <laughs> see he doesn't believe in in the the wi-fi fields but he was sleeping next to an amazon device and when I turned it off he, he was sleeping better so so I think he actually does <laughs> so we're taking some we're taking some aluminum mesh and we're going to put it on this uh, this backdrop that I've been using to film videos instead of stapling it to the wall. Why don't so. you wrap yourself around it like a blanket? Because I can't wrap my head. You can have it wherever you go. Make a whole suit. I do have a suit. I just can't protect my head. I don't want to have to wear it when I'm everywhere. Or a pot. I got an astronaut suit. Go to the moon. So behind the green screen, I put up this aluminum mesh that's clamped up to the top. And this is going to block any sort of field that's coming from my neighbor's house. So I'm going to head to the gym in about an hour. So I'm going to have another 30 grams of the sugar and then we'll, uh, and then we'll head out. So it's about five o'clock right now. My sister's having her dinner. Jean, what are we having today? A hot dog. See, if you follow the carnivore diet, you don't have to only eat steak. And in her case, you don't have to eat any steak at all. Where are we going later, Gina? I'm going to a dance class. Oh, well, okay, yeah. We're going to the gym and they have a... Uh... Have you done the dance class before, Gina? Mm-mm. Okay, so we're going to leave in about an hour. 
and uh, I'm gonna bring my honey water with me today. So I'll show you guys that. Heading out to the gym now, this is the sparkling water with honey. I did about three tablespoons in this whole thing. And normally I don't do this much honey in a day. Normally it usually bothers my stomach, but today I felt really good. You know, the fat in that first meal was really low. Uh, so I'm gonna have this throughout the workout. And then when we get home, I'm probably just gonna have steak. I'm not gonna add any more honey throughout the rest of the day. As you guys can see, it is way too dark outside, so I'm not gonna bother bringing the camera with me to the gym. But I'll see you guys when I get home for my last meal. Maybe we'll give my sister a little treat too. Just got back from the gym. My sister really enjoyed her dance class. Only one half naked girl there today, so it didn't really feel like a strip club. Uh, she had some coconut bites in the car and she's not gonna have a snack now, but I'm gonna cook up a steak on the broiler outside. So we're gonna grab some steaks from the fridge. What's in Frankie Boy's fridge? Nothing too exciting. Uh, this is the local beef we have in the local beef box on Frankie's syringe meat. I just grabbed a bunch of cuts uh, down from the shop. So I'll grab a couple steaks here and we'll throw them on the grill. Uh, here I have some stuff I'm testing out. That's actually a can of snails. I was gonna, I was thinking about doing a video on snails as cargo. Although I'm not really looking forward to it, to be honest. Maybe we'll do that if you guys really want to see it. And here I just have some trout caviar that I'm sampling for Frankie's syringe meat. Trout, trout caviar is, it's worse than salmon caviar. It's kind of hard to bite into. I just felt like, felt like trying it. So I'll bring these upstairs. So it's eight o'clock right now. My family is usually ready to go to bed at this point. So ever since I got this broiler for my birthday, I haven't used the grill or the smoker. Well, well I used the smoker once for the bacon video, but I haven't actually used this stuff to cook any of my food because this is so much quicker and easier. You know, it takes 10 minutes, like no chopping wood, no cleanup. So now that both broilers are on, I just gotta give it a few minutes to warm up and then it'll sear the steaks really quick. The only, the only issue with this is during the daytime when it's bright outside, you can't really tell that the burners are lit. Uh, Cause you know, right now it's really dark. You can see the blue glow, but in the daytime you don't. You kind of have to feel for the heat. So this is dinner, three local New York grass fed ribeyes. Looks delicious. You know what? I don't think these are all actually ribeyes. I think some of them are cut a little differently, but. must be a vegan or something he's freaking out problem with these broilers is the wind keeps blowing them out so you know if you have an enclosed area it's completely fine but windy outside today burners keep blowing out it is a nightmare to use at least with the grill you can close it here I have the three steaks you know got a decent crust on two of them this one a little gray because that broiler kept going off took a little longer to cook these because of that and as usual my eyes are far bigger than my stomach. I feel spontaneous today. I've never put seasoning on my steak outside of salt and pepper, and maybe I've used black pepper like once every two months. But I don't know, I feel a little different today. This has uh, organic garlic, onion, black pepper, sea salt, mustard seed, dill seed, paprika, coriander seed. So this is uh, simply organic grilling seasonings for steak. I bought this for the Swedish meatballs recipe, but we'll, uh, we'll try a little bit of it today. Uh, you know, I'm, I mean, mainly because I'm not really hungry and I'm doing this bodybuilding stuff, so I gotta make the meal somewhat enjoyable. Yeah, I could just put some salt on this, but let's see how this goes. I mean, onion, garlic, can't really go wrong. A lot of coriander in here, which I really like. I think there's some older videos in the Frankie Tufano archives where I make like a Bordelais sauce. I've also showed you guys like aged balsamic vinegar. If you guys are looking into steak toppings. What's really nice about buying, you know, local beef or even just grass fed beef is 
it tastes different every time because every animal tastes different. Uh, so there is variance in a sense that even if you're eating steak every day, you know, each cut, each animal, ribeye steak compared to ribeye steak, you know, totally different taste. I finished most of the steak to my surprise. I'm going to pick on the rest of this as I'm digesting. Uh, nutrient wise for the day, really just a lot of B vitamins and a lot of bioavailable minerals in the meat. Uh, what we're lacking, I did supplement. Uh, you know, I took a couple of things that I will cover for you guys in a video. I don't know if it's going to be a week or two from now. I'm still writing the script, but I'm going to cover, you know, what supplements I take, why I take them and other hypothetical stuff that you guys might want to be taking. And I just want to get it right, you know, so I don't have to revise it or anything in the future. Just a few to mention vitamin D, vitamin K2, magnesium, some very important ones. Uh, I'm not going to have anything else the rest of the day. And I, I might do some more honey later. I haven't really decided yet. Uh, I'll see how I feel. I'll be doing more frequent day of eatings just to keep you guys in check with, you know, what I'm eating, where I'm getting food from, why I'm doing certain things. And maybe we'll even do some food hauls, some grocery hauls. So you guys get an idea of, you know, what you should be eating when starting a carnivore diet, you know, what you should be eating when you're several months in, and then long-term maintenance, you know, what variances you can have in the diet, how you can do certain things. And I guess one thing to mention is, you know, if you're in such a state of dysbiosis or gut problems that you can't even put some spices on your food, you have some bigger problems to tackle. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video. Of course, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, above all, guys, if you can please share the video, you know, let people know this is how to do a high quality carnivore diet. If you have issues with fat, you know, maybe your gallbladder isn't working properly, maybe you want to try a more performance oriented stuff, but this is not what I've been doing for the majority of my bodybuilding transformation. I just started the, the higher honey consumption, you know, two, three weeks ago. Uh, so if you want to see, you know, what I was doing previously, I have some day of eatings that are like a month ago. Uh, if you guys want to get some of this high quality grass fed local meat, you can go to Frankie's free We have a bunch of other products as well. You can go to Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products, as well as frank stefanocom for a free carnivore diet meal plan, as well as the top five carnivore mistakes. Thanks for, again for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. The little piggy Italian boy eating all the steak.